Hey golf people, I've got a new launch monitor today. I've got the Ernest Sports ESB1. This is a unit that sells for sub $500, so it's great value, but does it perform? We're gonna take it out here to the range, but first we're gonna unbox it. Let's do it now. Bam! Just got this in the mail from playbetter.com where I get all my golf gear. You should too, playbetter.com. Great prices, great people. Guys that really care about the game of golf. But today, we're unboxing the Ernest Sports ESB1 launch monitor. I'm pretty excited about this one. It stands behind you and your game. Great tagline there, by the way. If we take a look at the box, I always like to take a look at the box because a lot of times this is the first time I'm seeing it with you guys. So I'm learning along with you. I'm just explaining what I see and that's how I like to do these unboxings. So there's gonna be data points here that we're going to find. Club speed, ball speed, distance, launch angle, spin rate. That's always nice to have. Some of these have spin, some don't. And smash factor. Um, you can actually engrave your name or club name on your unit. That's interesting. I wonder how you do that. Maybe we'll find out as we go along here. Uh, it says that it provides instant feedback. This is a lightweight device. It does feel pretty lightweight out of the box, I gotta say. It's rechargeable lithium ion battery. Um, there's a charging indicator light and downloadable upgrades. All right, so all pretty, pretty standard stuff there. We also are gonna need to download a free iOS app, which might tell me that there's not an Android app, um, which would be a real shame if that's the case. You will have to be an iOS user if that's the case. Now the Ernest Sports, one thing I do like to see on a box made in the USA, you don't see that too often. So big plus one there. Uh, for being made in the USA for folks here in the USA. If you're uh, one of our international followers, you probably won't care about that, but um, a lot of folks here in the country do just because we want to support American made products whenever possible. So this really is made, and it's, it's saying it right there, made for iPod, iPhone, iPad, um, nothing to do with Android. And there's like every iPhone ever made pretty much um, all the way back to the six, wow, or the SE, goodness gracious. It's been a long time, iPad mini three. Wow, these are like, I don't know, those are gotta be like eight years old by now. All right, let's give this thing an open, okay? Here we go, all right, out of the box, we've got our little user manual. We've got, it comes with a carrying case. That's a, that's a nice, nice little feature, um, kind of a leatherette, mm, let's call it plasticky smelling, um, Ernest Sports Improving Golf Performance. It's nice that it has that case there. Uh, here's the device, guys. Uh, I would say, if you haven't seen one before, it's, it's definitely bigger than a Mevo. Um, it's not quite as big as the Swing Caddy, but it's definitely thicker than the Swing Caddy. Um, and it's quite a bit larger than the Garmin G80 and, and uh, definitely much larger than the Mevo as well. Um, you've got a nice little metal foldable piece there. This has a very different type of charging unit to it. This is not USB. Almost all of these types of technologies these days are USB, but this is, this is kind of an old school, I guess that's an AC adapter. Um, there's also something here you could maybe open with a hex screw, but we're not gonna do that. You got a couple lights here. You got the power light and the charging indicator. Up top, just a couple of buttons, power button, left, right, and probably some sort of select button. So it's pretty simple. Um, it is fairly lightweight, definitely would fit good in a golf bag, no doubt about that. We're going to go ahead and open up this box, which I assume is the charger. Yep, you got your nice little charging cable there. Again, interesting in terms of like adapters. Almost everything these days, almost everything these days is USB, but this is... This is some analog technology right here. Look at that. And again, just gonna pop in here in this little AC charging port. So, good thing about it is it comes with a plug and almost nothing else comes with a plug these days. I don't know if that's any better or worse, but uh, you will not be able to charge this on course. You will also not be able to use, um, like Play Better often provides an extra like mobile battery charger with a lot of other devices. Uh, you won't find this with this one because it won't work. You can't charge this in, the, in your golf cart. You can't use a mobile battery charger. Uh, you're gonna have to literally plug this into a wall. 
some sort of standard plug. Okay, so I'm gonna get this charged up. We're gonna go ahead and download the app now, and then we're gonna take it out to the range and see how it performs. Okay guys, we made it out to the range here. I've got the unit here. It comes in this nice little travel bag, which is handy to have. And uh, there it is. We're gonna go ahead and fire it up. There's a power button right here. And then what we're gonna do is use our phone to connect to the Bluetooth network. This connects via Bluetooth. It fires right up. It defaults here, looks like to driver. I don't know if every unit's that way. And it's got this little stand here that pulls out. When you launch the app, you've got a session name. We're gonna call this CCC. I'm at Carrollwood. You could be here at Carrollwood too someday soon, by the way. September 29th, we're having a Let's Play Through Golf meetup. We'd love to have you. There's a link down below if you wanna join us. We've got about 20 guys who are gonna be playing some golf, having some fun. We're gonna be checking out all this golf technology that you see me use on the show every week. It'll all be here for you to use, including the ESB1 right here. All right, so CCC, what's the date today, is 8.27, and we'll hit start session. Now, if you wanna select a club with this, you can see it's defaulting to driver. You can literally just use this up and down arrow to go through, and we'll go ahead and choose seven iron here to start. Distance, 158 yards. Distance, 152 yards. Distance, 161 yards. What's nice is that not only do I hear it audibly here on my app, but I've also got it, some data right here on the unit itself. So it's nice to be able to just look back at the unit, even if you don't have your phone in your hand, and actually get some numbers. We've got spin. And we've got the carry there. We've got smash factor, club speed, ball speed. So it's actually cycling through some of those numbers there. So you're gonna find with any of these units that your distance is probably gonna be down when you're on the range because range balls just don't quite fly as far. And that's exactly what I'm seeing. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna punch a couple of flags here with my range finder just to make sure that what I'm hearing here is as accurate as I think it is. It seems really spot on, but I'm gonna punch a flag here and, and make sure. Okay, we've got 107 to that flag that's right in front of me. So I'm gonna choose my gap wedge and we're gonna see if we can hit a 107 shot here. Distance, 92 yards. 92, yeah, it was short. That one was short. Distance, 88 yards. They're definitely all coming up a little bit short there. Distance. 74 yards. Yes, it does register shanks, and yes, I did just shank that, that one. <laughs> Distance, 96 yards. All right, now that one landed, again, within about a yard of the hole. It showed 96 yards here, and we know it's 107. So from what I can tell, the distance on these shorter shots is just a little bit down. On the mid irons, it seems to be really good. Let's go ahead here and hit driver. My normal driver is like a 255 club. Out on the range with these balls, I'd imagine about 245 is right, so let's check those out now. Distance, 246 yards. Distance, 244 yards. Distance, 249 yards. Yeah, from what I can tell, the driver seems to be pretty spot on, just like I thought. We had one 244, I just hit one 249 there. The first one wasn't as good, it was 229 or something like that. So from what I can tell, that's pretty spot on. So for the most part, I really like the accuracy of this little unit. Now there are a couple other features of this app I wanna point out. There is this feature here where you actually get a shot by shot log there with all the data for each shot you took. It also has a visualization of a range. I didn't find this particular view to be all that useful and that's mostly because the shots come from like the angle over there on the right for some reason and I could not find a way to change that. However, I will say that shots that I hit left looked left of target and shots that I hit right of target looked right of target on this screen. So it's just another way to view it. Now, once you are done with a round, there are a few things that you can do. You can go back to your session logs, and again, you can see shot by shot the data that was recorded, which is really nice. And the other useful thing that I found was you can go over to averages, and you can literally 
choose a club there. There's my seven iron averages with a club speed of 80, ball speed 104, smash factor 1.29, my spin of 6,100 RPMs, and an average distance of 149, which was a little bit down from my normal averages, but I hit a couple of really bad shots there. There were a couple of anomalies in that thing, and my average launch of 20.68. So it's nice you can literally gap your bag. Once you have a number of good sessions out on the range, you'll have some really good averages there to go by. Those are the most useful features of this app. There is a skills challenge, which I did not dive into, but I believe that's some sort of target practice where you can hone in on your distances. All in all, I found this app to be useful. You've got the basics there and really no frills. Final verdict here on the ESB1. I really like how easy this thing is to set up and get started. It seems very intuitive. The app has the right set of features here. I really like the fact that you can gap everything in your bag. You can choose the lofts very easily. You get a few different visualizations, all very, very cool. Only thing that I'd say I'm a little worried about is maybe accuracy from those mid to lower iron. They seem to be coming up a little bit short, a few times there but all in all i'm really happy with what i looked at there if you enjoyed this one do hit subscribe leave a comment down below let me know if you've ever tried the earnest sports esb1 and don't forget about our meetup on september 29th right here where i'm standing we're gonna have some fun you can try this out for yourself i'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of let's play through Ooh.